So, good morning, everyone. Um, great day yesterday. Um, slower start today. I think uh, maybe people are just a little, a little jaded. But uh, let's see if we can't sort of liven things up just a little bit um, through this presentation. So we're talking about growth. We're talking about leadership. We're actually talking about people. Um, and in the next 15 minutes, I think we we have. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to try and cram in, um, talk about rugby. We're going to talk about Wolves coming to it somewhere. Um, we've got Rudyard Kipling being quoted, so you can't go wrong wrong with that. We've got human drama, which I'm sure everybody that hears this are amazed at, at actually what happened. Um, and for all of you techies out there, we even talk about databases. Not, in passing. Not, not too much, though. <laughs> but not too much, for those of you that aren't uh, technical. So, um, so we're going to talk about leadership through growth. Along with my role delivering training and professional development with uh, and through the GSA, I'm also a freelance executive coach and, and uh, consultant. Um, and uh, I was asked a little while back um, by... Uh, Steve's business CGI to give some thought to how I could help them to sustain what was an extraordinary period of growth for one particular part of uh, of CGI. Um, and so what we did was we gave some thought to a model that we could that we could actually use. Um, so CGI police it is. He's a fast-growing, fast-growing business. Um, so, what I'm going to do is to ask Steve Dennis, who is a director of CGI Policing, has got loads of experience of the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. to just give us this backdrop of this growth that CGI have actually been going through. Oh, thanks very much, Chris. Do I use the green one again? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so um, yeah, thanks very much, Chris. So um, CGI, yeah, we're probably the biggest IT company that you've never heard of. Um, we provide a whole bunch of services to um, UK PLC, so the UK government, and particularly across criminal justice. So we provide IT for the MOJ, so Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Services, um, the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, um, a number of different national and local police forces. And we also are involved heavily in safeguarding, so we run IT for the disclosure and barring service. So um, that big presence across the whole of um, criminal justice. Um, but we came together um, as our little part of the business in 2019. Um, so just before COVID hit, we decided to create a new um, sub-business unit um, with, um, with all of those policing accounts um, and a number of um, disparate bits of the business were all brought together. Um, and we also grew through an acquisition. So we acquired um, an account with one of the largest police forces in the UK, um, which was exciting. And we've had really great three years. So um, we've grown organically um, over the last three years, um, probably 40% um, year on year revenue growth, um, also growing our leadership team. Um, there were four of us to start with, so um, just a tiny few of us, but now there's 12 of us. So um, growing significantly there and also growing our members, the number of staff who work for us, so from 40 to 120 members over the, those, those last three years. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not all been easy. Um, it's, been, um, it's been great to have lots of new challenging work. We've um, won new accounts and done lots of exciting things with our customers and they want more from us. Um, but there are challenges along the way, so we've had some growing pains. So one of the things we, we wanted to talk about today was how we were going to try and address some of those growing pains. So we found that our complexity of works increased um, when there were four of us and only a small number of accounts. It was pretty easy to get your head around all the decisions that you had to make on a day to day basis. Um, but as we've grown, um, we found um, we're not as close to the action as we used to be. So um, we've needed to make rapid decisions without necessarily having all the information and the sheer volume of work has just increased. Um, we've realized we need to communicate much more effectively as management team. And some of our staff have found that pace of change quite, um, quite challenging. Um, we've got lots of embedded members who've worked um, on some of these policing accounts for like a decade or more. 
And we found that they've become single points of failure within the organization. They're the only people who know how things work. So we've really tried to think about how we can um, expand that knowledge and share that amongst um, a cr quickly growing workforce. Um, we've also found retention. Um, well, it's been pretty good, but we've had a lot of people retiring. It's kind of reached that point, I think, with the pandemic as well. A lot of people did bring forward retirement dates. Um, so we found that we've had to recruit heavily and that brings its own challenges. We found that um, people that we brought in obviously haven't come from the same background as us, haven't had that same cultural experience. Um, and therefore, we've we've tried to embed them within the organization. Um, but we do provide um, some of the most important um, and um, compelling and challenging IT systems for UK policing and UK government. So we really wanted to challenge ourselves to think about who we are, what we stand for, um, and why are we here. We're not just here to provide IT, um, we're here to make a difference to, um, to the country. So um, we made sure that we, we thought about this as a leadership team and we asked Chris to help us. Um, we, we recognized we needed some help to accelerate our performance and make us work better as a leadership team. So um, I'll hand back to Chris to tell us a little about, a bit about what we've, what we've been up to. Slide check, yet, so. Thanks, Steve. The, when I was um, first asked to get involved, I, I thought this is a, this is a great challenge. It's a, it's a great team of people. Um, and uh, Nick Dahl, who's the, the vice president of this particular part of the business, uh, been working within CGI for a long time and said, you know, Chris, you said, you know, these are some of the best people that uh, that I've ever worked with. Really, you know, super proud of the the group that he'd that he'd uh, that he was working with. But he recognised as well um, as I think all the leadership team have that the challenge is about keeping it going. You know, it's all very well to to get things going, but how can you keep this thing going? And so I started thinking about perhaps a, a model that we could that we could use um, to inform the design of any program that we put in place. And this is where the the rugby bit of the story comes in, um, because for those of you that don't know much about rugby and specifically rugby union, there is one team in the world that has dominated for an extraordinary period of time since they first started playing rugby in 1903 they just keep winning they just keep winning and winning and winning so as you can see from that slide um, all of the games that they played for that 120 years they've actually managed to win 79 percent of them the percentage is even higher when you just look at the professional era, when you would think that other teams would be able to opt their game. Um, clearly, there are some countries that have got much bigger pools of talent to draw on. You know, New Zealand, what, five million people, something like that, whereas you know England, France, South Africa, much, much bigger populations. Um, so it seemed that, yes, there was clearly... Um, the, the need to have great players. You need to have people who were technically adept at playing the game of rugby. Um, in the same way as in your businesses, you need to have people who are technically adept at doing the things that's needed to drive the, to deliver the, deliver the business. But it seemed that if you can keep this thing going for 120 years, why is it that they seem to be able to keep producing these great players from this very small population and the right coaches and come up with the right tactics? All of these things seem to be something that all of the other competitors should really be able to do a lot better. Um, and we started thinking about what was that X factor? Is that a book that was written back in um, 2013 that I, I remembered um, a book called Legacy, which uh, if you haven't seen a copy of it, I'd highly recommend it. It's a very, very uh, well-written book, very easy to read, you know, very short chapters. So for those of you that just like to kind of dip in, it's, uh, it's a really, really interesting and for a lot of people, very inspiring book. But one of the things that he came up with this, was this equation. He said, yeah, he said, you know, when it comes down to performance, you do need capability, technical capability, for, for sure. You need resources, yep, yeah, you need all of that. But 
So this is what it's all about. Performance equals capability times behaviour. And the work that this guy wrote the book did with the All Blacks in finding out what was the difference was really all about this notion of, of behaviour. So we started thinking about how could we use this, this model to inform the development of a leadership programme and to build that leadership programme out to the rest of the, rest of the business. Now, one of the key ideas in, in the, the approach that the All Blacks take um, actually comes from the Rudyard Kipling poem that I, that I mentioned. Um, so Kipling produced this, this great phrase, I think, that's, that really resonated with me and I think resonates with a lot of people. It is, the strength of the pack is the wolf, and the strength of the wolf is the pack. So it's about designing programs which would have a dual focus. There was a need to focus on the teams, for sure. But there was also a need to focus on the individuals as well. And those of you that are in management and leadership positions know that when things are going badly, it can get really tough. When things are going really well, it can also be really tough as well. It can be challenging. Things don't go right all of the time. And so to find a, a mechanism to support all of the individual leaders one-to-one -one, um, has proved to be really quite an important part of the design. So what we've got is a program which has got one-to-one -one coaching for each of the leaders, as well as some team um, get-togethers where we look at the function of the team and how we can build out the actual culture itself. So it's a, a two-stream two approach. So there are a number of ideas that, that are talked about within the All Blacks model, and we haven't got time to go through all of them today. Um, but there are three that really do strike a chord. And they're the three that we've already started to, to make some, some progress around. So this, there's this idea within the All Blacks of legacy, of being able to do something within the organisation that they work in, that they operate in, that they play in, that will make a mark, that will leave something behind. And I think we've all worked in those organisations where we've actually felt that sense that we're actually making some sort of difference rather than just going through the motions, rather than just turning up to do a job. And this seemed to be something that was particularly important for this leadership group, this notion of how can we build on this idea of legacy. And it started getting wrapped up in this other idea around purpose, which links with an idea that some of you may have come across a number of times before, that there's a guy called Simon Sinek who's become really quite popular um, in LinkedIn and internet and TED Talks and, and the, the like. And, and you may have come across this talk he does around the why and the importance of the why. He says, you know, people aren't genuinely interested in the what you do or how you do it, really. You know, that's just conversation. But they get really excited when you can get them involved in why you're actually doing this, why it's important to you, why are you doing it, what is the purpose that is driving you as an organisation. And interestingly, with CGI policing, because it delivers services to the police force, uh, the police forces um, around the UK, there was this sense that, hey, hang on a minute, whoa, hang you know, actually, we are making a difference here. We actually are making a difference to an important public service. There are those people within CGI policing who are pretty technical guys. You know, these are the guys that are quite happy, you know, and there's lots of people, absolutely the bedrock of technical businesses for sure, really happy sitting there just doing the do. They don't want to talk to too many people because they'd rather do the coding. That's what they do. Trying to get them really fired up is, uh, is a, an important challenge for any leadership group. 
And it was interesting, we had a meeting a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, I think, yeah. where we got all the team together, first time for a couple of years. And I was talking to these technical guys and they were saying, you know, it's the first time really that I've thought, actually, this code that I'm producing is not just code. It actually translates into something that's important. <laughs> something that's important to that person and important to the wider, wider community. So there was this notion of purpose that really started to take hold. The one other thought, and it was this notion of stories. They're the All Blacks from New Zealand, they come from this Maori culture of oral storytelling. That's how the culture is passed through the generations. And so they adopt this and they tell stories of great games and great players and they tell stories of, you know, the tackles that were made that saved the, saved the game. This is what they, what they use to, to excite people, to, to inspire people. It's what we try to do in these, these conferences, really, when we're telling case, stories of case studies. Case studies are stories. And you know what it's like when you hear a case study, actually people sit up and they think, yeah, this is real life. These are, these are stories. So we realise that we've got to get better at telling stories, at telling stories to, to the, uh, to the organisation in lots of different ways. So much is done and never told. So the story of that person who worked really hard worked really, really hard and made that deadline, delivered that code, just doesn't get told. When it gets told, that person just, you know, feels a little bit bigger. And everybody else gets bought into the idea of the work that we're actually doing. So what we wanted to do, and this is where the human drama comes in, I know you were wondering, this is where the human drama comes in, is that there is a fantastic story about the work that this CGI policing Team. This CGI policing team actually do. So, Steve, perhaps you could yeah, I will do. talk yeah. us through this. Um, thanks very much, Chris. So, um, yeah, this is a story that we told um, at the National Police Chiefs Council's Intelligence Conference that was held a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was the first time that all of the chief officers across UK policing have come together since COVID. Um, so a really important, um, uh, important event for them to get together and start thinking about how best they use intelligence across UK policing. Um, and as Chris said, we also told this at our, um, our member um, meeting that we had last week, um, where we brought together 80 members from um, CGI policing. So um, first time we'd met again um, face to face since COVID. So um, we really wanted to explain to those members how we were making a difference um, to UK policing and really what they were doing is important. Um, it is something we've learned from the work that we do, we're doing with Chris um, from Legacy. And we wanted to wake people up a bit, challenge them and make them feel a bit uncomfortable. So um, I'm just gonna tell you a little story about um, how um, the work that we do, do is contributing towards law enforcement. So um, a local law enforcement body in the USA um, this was a couple of years back, received a call from a distraught member of the public, um, a friend that she had um, back in the UK who she hadn't spoken to for um, a couple of years, had started posting quite distressing messages on Facebook um, and they were becoming more desperate each time. Um, the member, she was really worried about her welfare, so she didn't know what to do, so she contacted her local police force in the USA. Um, luckily, they reviewed the messages. Um, they thought, yeah, there is something really concerning here and we're worried for this person's um, safety. So they contacted um, the UK authorities, um, Norfolk Constabulary. So from Facebook, they were able to identify the, um, the ladies, basically the area she lived in the UK, her email address, um, and just a little bit of personal data about her. Um, so. Um, the, um, the member of law enforcement in the US um, contacted um, Norfolk Constabulary and they sent through details with this little note. So I'm going to read you this little note. Um, it's very US centric. Um, I won't try my American accent, but <laughs> hello. Pursuant to our earlier telephone conversation and in accordance with applicable laws and our terms of service, we are sending information related to the Facebook user threatening suicide as we believe that this user is at imminent risk of death or serious physical injury, 
We hope that this information may assist your agency with the welfare check. Blah, 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 blah. Thank you, law enforcement response team. So, uh, 1810, the, um, the agent on the phone at Norfolk Constabulary um, received that, um, that email um, from the US um, with the details of this person. Now, fortunately, um, Norfolk do have a, um, have a um, P&D terminal in their control room. Um, now, P&D is the IT system that CGI provide for UK policing, and it basically provides intelligence um, for um, police to be able to um, investigate and solve crime. Um, it includes information that isn't held um, on, um, on the more core systems like the police national computer which is about people who've um, been convicted and and having convictions this is a more intelligence based system um, that draws information from 43 different different IT systems across the UK um, so um, at 1610 they did a search on PND and they managed to um, locate this person and they dispatched an ambulance um, to the, um, the the address and um, within 12 minutes, um, the ambulance um, basically managed to get into the person's address um, and they found this person lying um, unconscious on the floor um, next to their two-year-old um, son, um, which was quite tragic, but um, they found also this, this message um, next to the person. Now, you can't read it here, um, but I will read it out. Um, and it says, Dear Cameron, um, you're my world and you always will be my shining star, my sky. I love you more than one could love anyone. Every day and everything, you are mine. I love you uncontrollably and inconsolably. I love you, Cameron. And that was the message they found next to the unconscious body um, of, the, of the lady um, who was found via PND. So we, we told that story, as I say, at the MPCC um, conference and also to our members, and we found it really did make a difference. It really hit home. Um, we were asking the MPCC, you know, what would their response times have been? Um, Norfolk luckily had this IT available to them within their conference room. Um, do you all, you know, each police force across the UK have that capability? And we found in the room there were nods, there were shakes of the head, and, and some police, police forces just didn't know. Um, so that was a way that we, we really communicated with them. Um, did they think about doing this and what would they have done? And we found also for our members when we told this story at our Staff Away Day that they felt that they were part of something more, which is what Chris was talking about, um, that we, we actually do make a difference to what, what we're doing and it's the why, um, not just um, the what of what we do. So I'll hand you back to Chris just to, um, to wrap up. Grand, okay, thanks. You know, I, I, every time I hear that story, and you know, I think 12 minutes, you know, and it, it's, it's just the other, the, you know, the, kind of the other side of the world, you know, the other side of the Atlantic, and they, they managed to, you know, get into this place and save this woman's life. I mean, that was the, save her life and save the life of this little, little boy, really, who would have lost his mom otherwise. You know, it, it's an extraordinary story. And that's what technology can do, and that's what teams can do. Um, and it's, it's these sort of things that we need to use to, to try and inspire businesses. And that's what the All Blacks talk about. You know, we try and, they try and capture that to translate capability into sustainable success. It's tough for the leadership team because you can't let up. You've got to keep doing this. You've got to keep telling the stories. You've got to keep reminding people that there is a purpose and we've got to do this and we've got to keep on, keep on doing it. So. Um, just to, ah. yeah. So um, just to just to tie it all up, where are we at the moment with the the CGI policing leadership team? Well, you know, it's already starting to develop better communications and 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 the the leadership team working better as a as a team in it in itself. Um, the one to one coaching is. I think the word is resilience. It is helping those individual leaders to address their own unique problems that pop up. You know, I, I meet with them every two or three months and every two or three months, there's something different to talk about. There's something different to, 
to sort out. And it's about trying to get perspective more often than not. You know, we all get sucked into the weeds. We all get sucked into the problems. And you sometimes need this little bit of space just to take a step back and say, okay, what's important? What are the priorities? That's what the the one-to-one coaching is doing. And using stories to, to motivate, to inspire, and most important, perhaps, to retain these guys within this business and to attract new people who get excited by the fact that uh, you know, this is an exciting business to be a part of and he's really making a, making a difference. So it's, uh, for me, I feel a bit of a fraud because it's great fun um, and they still pay me money. So you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great project to be, uh, to be a part of. So uh, I don't know that we're going to be around. Um, I'm going to be around for the rest of the day. Stu's perhaps going to be around for a little while longer. So if you want to talk to us about what it is that we're doing, we will be. I will be really happy to to um, regale you with stories of daring do. But uh, if there's any, any questions now, we're happy to deal with those. If not, that's fine as well. I know we're a bit behind time. Thank you very much. <laughs>